Okay, we're reading Soft Rain, Chapter 8, The Coughing Disease. Soft Rain kept Pet's rope tightly around her waist. She knew that Father and Hawk Boy would bring Pet with them. Would they also bring her doll? Every day she searched among the new arrivals for her father and young brother. She knew her mother was also looking for them. Mother still kept father's tobacco pouch inside her dress, moving it carefully into her pack each night to keep it safe and dry. Through the cracks, Soft Rain watched the soldiers finish the second pin. After they put the gate in the place, they shouted, Hooray! and slapped each other on the back. What a strange custom it is to show happiness by hitting someone, she thought. Then she saw big boots again. The first time they had arrived, more real people were with him. He motioned to the soldiers who were hitting each other to open the gate they had just closed. A wagon full of people pulled up to it. Soft Rain saw only women and children herded out of the wagon and into the new pen. When she turned around, Big Boots was standing near her. Lone women with children, pack up your belongings. You're being moved, he shouted. When no one responded, she grabbed soft, he grabbed Soft Rain's arm. You understand me. Tell them they must move, he snarled. Mother quickly ran to Soft Rain, pulling her away from Big Boots. We will tell them our way, she said slowly. See that you do, and hurry. His face was red. Soft Rain looked at the finger marks Big Boots had left on her arm. She tried to rub them away. She and Mother walked among the people, explaining to the women with no men what Big Boots had said. Soft Rain knew that some of them understood his language, just as Mother did, though they would never let him know. Where are we moving, they all asked. I don't know. It's best not to ask too many questions, Mother answered. Everyone must do as the soldiers say. When all the women stood in line with their belongings, Big Boots yelled, Open the gate. Follow me, you women. He started down toward the new pen. On the way, Soft Rain stopped to gaze at the river. She saw the soldiers with the silver buckles staring at her. Move along, Big Boots shouted, pushing her. She stumbled, falling against him. His smell, a more putrid stink than she had ever known, made her grunt. Why doesn't he wash in the river? She turned away quickly. At the gate, a soldier handed Mother a bucket. You know what this is for. We don't have outhouses here. He looked down at Soft Rain, and also to get sick in. Tell the others to use mess buckets when they're sick. Keep this stockade cleaner than the other one. To Big Boots, he added, they ought to know that much. They're only Cherokee, Big Boots sneered. They weren't enough buckets and no place to empty them, Mother said angrily in her language. Soft Rain sniffed when she passed the soldier at the gate. All the soldiers stink, she thought. Why don't they bathe? They could, but they don't. Now the bucket is for them to use the bathroom in. They found a place along the wall under a narrow roof. Mother arranged their few belongings and greeted the women on each side of them. Soft Rain went to look for another crack. She had to keep watching outside the pen while she waited inside. A few mornings after their move, Mother suggested that Soft Rain find some other children. Talk with them, start a game, or tell a story, she said. Soft Rain walked along the stockade looking at the hot, sad faces of sick children, and she decided it wasn't the time for games or storytelling. Would it ever be? Then she felt the stillness all around her, and the gate opened. More people were coming. She squeezed through the crowd until she could see each new arrival. There were no men, but two people looked familiar. Her mouth dropped open when she was sure she recognized her aunt Green Fern. Her aunt and Green Fern. Rushing toward them, she shouted, Aunt Key, Green Fern, here I am. At once, Aunt Key dropped her bundle and threw her arms around soft rain. My heart is glad, she exclaimed. She took a deep breath and asked, where is your mother? She's over there, Soft Rain told her excitedly. She led the way, dragging Aunt Key's pack. When the two sisters saw each other, they shrieked with joy, hugged each other, hugged the two girls, laughed, and then they cried. Soft Rain cried, too, tears of happiness, no, though not of sadness. Green Fern didn't cry and barely smiled. 
Soft Rain touched her hand, thinking she looks very skinny. She must be tired and hungry. Mother quickly unwrapped the huge piece of bacon she had carried from home. Soft Rain's mouth watered as her mother sliced it, too slowly, Mother warned, handing each of them a thin slice. Soft Rain did until her piece was gone. My stomach likes our food best, she thought. Inside, she felt warm, calm, and almost full. Green Fern could not be persuaded to eat her share. Mother carefully packed it away with the rest of the bacon. She quickly hid the knife where they had, been, had seen the soldiers take away even small knives, no weapons, they said. Soft Rain listened while Mother and Aunt Key talked of being captured, of where Father and Hawk Boy and Uncle Swimming Bear could be. When darkness came, she slept next to Green Fern. Once when she awakened, Green Fern was shivering and moaning. Soft Rain covered her cousin with part of her own blanket. The stirring of people in the heat of the day awakened her early. She lay motionless and con content, thinking about having found Aunt Key and Green Fern. But will we ever find Father? Is he still at home picking our corn with Hawk Boy? She wished the soldiers would let her outside the stockade to bathe in the river. If only she could go back to their cabin and bathe. She missed playing in the cool creek water with Pet. She missed Father and Grandmother and Hawk Boy. As the sun grew in the sky, the stockade became busier and noisier with people and with flies. All day, the flies buzzed and bit. All day, Soft Rain complained of the heat and the sweat. We smell like big boots, she told Green Fern, who replied by holding her nose. There were other bad smells, too. Every day, many people were sick and could not always get to a bucket in time. Mother tried to comfort some of the sick children whose mothers were also ill. Two small ones died in her arms. What makes them ill, Soft Rain asked, brushing away a fly from her forehead. The white man's diseases, Aunt Key muttered. Unakas, the white men call themselves. Elder brothers, ha, I will not call them Unakas. Good elder brothers do not bring heartache and disease. One morning, soon after their arrival, Green Fern awoke with Unaka disease. Red spots covered her face and arms. Mother and Aunt Key moved her blanket farther away, but Soft Rain could still hear her asking for water to bathe in to get cool. I want to give water to Green Fern, and I can fan the flies off her too, Soft Rain said when Mother brought her a drink. She is very ill, Mother spoke softly. It is best to let her be alone. Aunt Key will take, her, take care that she gets enough water. If they don't have enough, they can take more of ours. For many days, Soft Rain watched and worried about Green Fern until one morning she herself awoke shivering, completely drenched in sweat. Then she began coughing. Her breath came hard as the coughing continued. Her mother built a tent over her from a piece of cloth she had saved for a dress Try to sleep, daughter, she repeated again and again. Soft rain lay shaded, but not cool. When she tried to sit, she vomited, not always in the bucket. The smell grew worse. She sniffed, rubbing her nose, but the stench would not go away. She slept or woke, turned, coughed. It was dark, quiet. She slept, awoke. It was light. She didn't know how many days passed in this way before her coughing became less. When she awakened to see Aunt Key bending over her, someone else was coughing nearby. Who is it, she asked. Shh, your mother now has the coughing disease. Soft Rain sat up and saw her mother lying next to her in the shade of the tent. Crawling over to her, she gently touched her lips to her mother's forehead. Where is Green Fern, Soft Rain whispered to Aunt Key. Is she well now? Aunt Key lowered her eyes. Tears came. The disease of the white men killed my daughter, and the soldiers have taken my husband from me. My sister and you are my only family now. Soft Rain climbed into Aunt Key's lap. Green Fern was my best friend, she sobbed. Poor Soft Rain. She lost her cousin. And remember that over 4,000 Cherokees died during this trail of tears. It's just such a sad story. 
and unfortunately, it's a true story.